Ito ang Broad Streamcast Communicators, ang naiba at kakaibang plataforma sa digital broadcast. Mula Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao hanggang sa iba't ibang dako ng mundo. Broad Streamcast Communicators, ang sandigan ng sambayanan mula sa walang labis at walang kulang na pagbabalita, paglilingkod, maglalahad ng mga mapagbuong komentaryo at usaping pambayan para sa kapakanan ng karamihan. Broad Streamcast Communicators, tuwirang maglilingkod ngayon hanggang sa susunod na henerasyon. Buhay Online Sikahan at kaalamang pangkabuhayan Ating tunghayan Pakinggan at tuklasin ang mga pangyayari at kaganapan sa mundo ng online Buhay Online Sikahan at kaalamang pangkabuhayan Alamin ang pinakalatest trends mula sa trabaho at kung hanggang sa anak ang narating ng teknolohiyang ito At ngayon, narito na ang ating host ang ating Teki Mami si J.C. Bautista Hello, magandang umaga. Happy Wednesday to everyone. It is a Wednesday, isn't it? Uh, palagi na lang akong uh, medyo nawawala kung saan kung time frame or kung anong araw na. It's so easy to lose track of time and play and place. Working from home, we are we're stuck here in the house. It's the time actually. Wires could be so. Anyway, so yeah, happy Wednesday, everyone. Maganda maganda maganda. Hala. All of a sudden, it's raining hard. Oh my gosh. Well, here in Pampanga, bakit ba naging Fahrenheit itong aking weather dito? Naging 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Ano yun? But anyway, what is the weather here? But, but malumig, malumig dito sa Pampanga. Actually, ito yung umaga. 26, ganyan, 25 degrees. Actually, you know, it has been pleasant weather. At yan po, yung pabugso-bugso ulan. Yan, ulan na naman po ngayon. Mas titigil na mga kagal. Pero just enough to cool, cool down everything else, no? But anyway, uh, happy Wednesday. And we're still po in the series of our cyber crime fighting in this uh, pandemic situation in this in 2022. How are we fending? How are we dealing with the cyber crimes that are proliferating? The bapo, as we speak, dami dami pong na debiktima na mga cyber crimes everywhere sa ating bahay, sa ating kahanan, sa mga school, may sa pag-aaral, sa trabaho, you know, sa ating mga email, sa ating mga cellphone. Yan po nagkalat po ang ang ganyan, ang um, cyber crimes na sinatawag, no? But, um, nabaling nga rin ito. Okay. Hold on a second. I'm just trying to monitor. Okay, very good. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the ones uh, that are joining us today for the show. Maraming maraming salamat for your support. And, um, uh, yeah, as I was saying, po, uh, uh, we're still continuing our series on that. Marami po tayong nakuhang text messages asking questions on, on how to deal with this. And uh, yesterday, uh, we're going to pick up where we left off uh, kahapon, no? Hello, hello, thank you for the thumbs up. Uh, you can have keep your mouth on. But, um, but uh, before that, okay, syempre, ano muna tayo, update on the COVID situation and education things that are happening here, here in the Philippines where I where I'm based right now. I am a plain video for that. So, yeah. So, uh, uh, education wise, of course, we know that by August 22, which is next week, next Monday, po, I balik na po ng face to face 
uh, learning po dito sa Pilipinas. After two and a half years of being cooped up in the house, okay, at hindi po nakakapag-aral sa campus, ang mga college, at ang mga sa eskwelahan, yung mga bata, but some of course have already started face-to-face -face noong July, noong June pa, pero hindi po lahat. Mostly po public schools, but uh, by, by August 22, Monday, we expect po uh, 75% of uh, the schools uh, are going to be face-to-face -face now, which is like, but mostly pa rin, public schools. Hindi po yung uh, private schools. Hindi pa siya 100%. Because they were given until uh, October 31, the transition, and do blended learning po, hanggang October 31. Estimated enrolled learners for school year 2022 to 2023 is now over 21 million. Ito pong sabi ng DepEd, no? Uh, last, less than a week before classes begin, the Department of Education or ang DepEd revealed that the number of enrolled learners, okay, for the second, for the school year 2022-2023 uh, has climbed to 21,272,820. As of Tuesday po, as of kahapon, August 16, all right? Okay. Uh, of this number, 18,722,393 were from public school. Oh, 2,478,488 from private schools. Maliit pa rin talagang number ng private schools kasi talaga marami pa pong magulang na ayaw papasukin yung mga anak nila dahil sa meron pa akong virus, okay? Pero of course, the fact remains is the virus is still here and will still be here. And, and di ba po, may moves ang ating Vice President Sara Duterte to, to that by November 2, 100% uh, na po ang face-to-face -face, uh, that she's looking at, even private schools included, okay? No ifs and buts na yun. Uh, parang yun ang ultimatum na time, right? Pero nga, di ba, yung ACT, yung Association of Certified Teachers, we're complaining that not all uh, schools are ready to for the for the, for this transition into I mean to going rolling back to face to face. Because po, a lot of the schools are kulang pa, hindi pa na, na sanitize, hindi pa na, na ready to be prepared so, so face to face. And of course, at the same time, naman din yung yung uh, DOH was saying that we expect a surge, not well, not a surge, but an up uh, uh, um, uh, ang pagdagdag po, uh, ano yun, pag-increase po ng infections pag, pag nag-face-to-face na. Kasi expected na po yan. Kasi ngayon nangyayari, di ba, yung Omicron BA variant 4 and 5 is very, very, uh, it's highly contagious and it's contaminating a lot of people, a lot of countries, di ba, even America alone and Europe also rin na, na nagtanggal na ng mga safety protocols kumakalat yung virus kasi talaga po siyang infectious, no? contagious. Pero of course, as we know, ako rin, speaking from experience, no? and of course, from people I know, the Omicron is not so fatal or, or serious as the Delta variant or the variants before it. Kasi nga, it's being treated like a flu. Although, may mga iba, of course, you know, they claim to have more serious Ill, uh, symptoms than others, but most of them are parang, ano, like, it's like a flu. Is my own, you know, my sister and her family, her kids got it for the second time, Omicron. And, and it just takes about five days or so, and then you check again, wala na siya. Then you just don't, you just treat it like a flu. You take a paracetamol, vitamin C, and all those things. And ako nga, yung Delta yung nakuha ko last year, pero hindi rin kami ng hospital. Na, thank you, Lord. Nang quarantine lang kami sa bahay. Right? It's, it's, it's those serious symptoms na hindi ka makahinga when you have to watch out for your oxygen level and that you need to be intubated. Yun na po yung seryoso na nangyayari. But uh, as per ano rin po, survey as, or, or reports, the hospitalization po talaga is less now than last year, okay? With, with regards to COVID patients. Kasi po, yung mga hindi naman serious yung symptoms, uh, we are requested uh, to stay home and quarantine ourselves. You know, kung, kung, kung isa ka lang sa household mo, magkulong ka sa kwarto mo, you know, yung separate yung mga gamit mo, uh, kung kayo naman lahat infected, di mag-quarantine kayo sa buong bahay nyo. And, you know, nawawala rin siya after a while. But but, that, but it doesn't say that, doesn't mean to say that we will be complacent and not 
uh, have the safety protocols, your basic things pa naman, which is basically wearing a mask when you go out or when you join public places or what. Pero yun nga, because operational na ang lahat, mga restaurants, mga events, ganyan, hindi mo maiwasan. Of course, you know that, that as soon as you put down that mask, you're subject to the virus because it's airborne, you know? Or if kausap mo, or yung, or yung inaccessirculate na air, sa open air na yan, na nasa ano kaya public gathering or so or sa restaurant or sa cafe or sa bar see nagiging normal nga it's already being normal to hear that oh my my child got covid or our neighbor got covid or i got covid hindi na po yan parang tabu not like in 2020 and uh, the beginning of 2021 when people were even ashamed to admit that they had covid para kang merong ketong na leprosy na Okay, then they'll take you away and quarantine you somewhere. Yeah. Well, but it's not to say that we shouldn't be still uh, vigilant and we shouldn't still be concerned because there is still a concern, right? You know, meron pa pong concern. Meron pa rin talaga pong virus, okay? So, yan pong tinitignan na enrollment na this, uh, this school year. Uh, so far, the highest tally of enrollees was recorded in Calabarzon, okay? With 3 million 70,451 enrolled learners sa Calabarzon alone, okay? So, it was followed by Metro Manila with a tally of 2,295,045, okay? Yan po, okay? Uh, 28.6 million po ang ating expected learners for this year. Wow! Hinihikayat pa, pa rin po natin ang ating mga magulang na hindi, na nakakapag, na hindi pa nakakapag-enroll ng kanilang mga anak uh, wag na nating hit kayo ang deadline. Sa ngayon, wala pa po tayong extension na napag-uusapan. We're expecting 28.6 million learners for this year. We are still encouraging, okay, our parents who have not yet enrolled their children to have their kids enrolled now, okay? Uh, let us now, uh, let us now wait, let us not wait for the deadline, okay? So far, we have not discussed an extension yet. Ito pong sinabi ni DepEd spokesperson Michael Poa nung kanilang laging handa na public briefing, okay? Meanwhile, okay, the enrollment period will end on August 22. Legal guardians and students were reminded that they may choose between the following enrollment methods, whether it's in person, remote, and drop box enrollment, okay? Uh, okay, all right. Individuals who will select the in-person enrollment method were rem reminded to strictly observe, okay, uh, health protocols such as wearing masks, okay, and adhering to physical distancing in order to prevent the possible spread of COVID. So, yun po, no? Kailangan pa rin natin uh, ingat okay, uh, and to make sure na na pag nasa public place tayo ay tayo ay naka ano pa rin, maskara, okay? Naka mask because na andyan pa yung virus so you shouldn't, you shouldn't really uh, not pay heed to the to the mga paalala, okay? Alright. Classes for the upcoming so, uh, school year will begin on Monday, August 22, okay? Ayan po, alright? Tapos po naman, on that note, regarding naman traveling, okay? Wow. Ito po, ah, kahapon po ito. The United States Center for Disease Control and Prevention added three countries, including the Philippines, to its high-risk list for COVID-19. Oh my goodness, di ba? Bakit kaya, right? Ha, ah, well, bakit kaya? Well, hindi ako nagtataka dahil, di ba nga, ito nga sa Pampanga, Parang yung mga tao, parang feeling nila, parang feeling nila walang ano, COVID. Uh, the Philippines, Russia, and Nepal were added to places with level 3 or high-risk designation po, okay? Uh, make sure you're up to date with your COVID-19 vaccines before traveling to the Philippines. Ayan po ang sinabi ng CDC or the United States Center for Disease Control and Prevention, okay? Uh, level 3 applies 
Okay? Ayan na, sabi nila, oh, make sure you're up to date with your COVID-19 vaccines before traveling to the Philippines. If you're not up to date with your COVID-19 vaccines, avoid travel to the Philippines. Ayan ang sinabi ng CDC, sa website nila. Level 3 applies to destinations that have had over 100 cases per 100,000 people in the past 28 days. Okay? The Department of Health recorded, okay, recorded, Madali lang ha, madali lang po at uh, magugulhan ito medyo aking monitor. Hold on a second. Let me just fix this. Hmm. Am I broadcasting fine po? So, parang hindi ko nakikita yung sarili ko. I don't like this. Hmm. No, no, no. Anyway. All right, never mind. I'm just going to lose this one. Anyway, so level three applies to destinations that have had over 100,000 people in the past 28, 28 days okay, infected. The Department of Health recorded 28,008 additional cases or 4,001 infections per day from August 8 to August 14 both. The figure was 3% higher than infection slug from a week before. Dumataas pa po, okay? Uh, the, the Philippines is once again seeing a spike in infections fueled by the presence of fast-spreading variants, increased mobility. Yun nga po kasi, ayun, ang, ang pinakamain dun is the increased mobility. Eh. Tsaka yung, ang, lahat na nagtatravel, lahat na nag out of town, okay? And the waning vaccine immunity of the population, yes. Hindi po po lahat bakunado, yung mga iba, two doses lang, pero hindi na nagpa-booster. Despite the increase in cases, the Philippines remain at low risk for COVID-19 spread, okay? The country has confirmed 3.8 million COVID-19 cases with 61,078 fatalities since the health crisis began in 2020. Tapos naman, pila tayong pinatawa ng ano, high risk ng, ng Amerika, eh, hindi naman tayo high risk pa. Because, di ba, in fact, Metro Manila positivity rate is trending downward, trending downward, but wave not over yet. Ito po, uh, okay, Metro Manila positivity rate po is trending downward, okay? Teachers and parents finalize their classroom preparations in the preparation for the school pagbabalik sa kwela po ng face-to-face sa Monday. But the volume of positive COVID-19 cases po, coming out of Metro Manila has been steadily declining since the first week of August, okay? Indicating a downward trend, independent pandemic monitor of the research disclosed kahapon, okay? In a tweet advisory that morning, though, Okta Research Fellow Guido David urged sobriety over the still emerging trends, pointing out that they need to be sustained for a few more weeks until they can conclusively say the peak has arrived, okay? All right? To recall, after research among the most accurate pandemic forecasters in the time of COVID-19, earlier pegged the peak, spurred by the arrival of new sub <clears throat> subvariants coming with the week of July 16 to 23, based on the data they had at the time. But the think tank later on admitted that for more recent figures, the projection ultimately fell through after cases suddenly started rising again after weeks of decline. Talaga naman. While cases, ano po yan eh, nagtaas nung nag-umpisa nang magbiyahe-biyahe tapos yung mga Cebu Pacific nag-offer na ng mga piso. Ano, ano ang dami na pong nagbiyahe-biyahe. Kaya yan, na-expect na nating nag-spread, no? While cases may, tsaka kasi wala nang, hindi na kailangan yung mga PCR tests. Eh, di ba? Basta makita mo yung vaccination certificate. While cases may have already peaked in the national capital region, the trends will need to hold as trends are still reversible. The risk level in the NCR remains moderate. The wave is not yet over. According to Okta Research, the seven-day positivity rate of 17.3% on August 7 is now down to 16.1. Very good, okay? As of Sunday, yan po, August 14. Likewise, the one-week growth rate of cases in the capital region decreased to negative 7%. Diba? A little decrease is better than no decrease, right? From August 1 to 7, though, the Philippines recorded 27,331 more COVID-19 cases, which meant just a 
1.8% increase from the week before. The reproduction number in the NCR decreased to 1.13 of August 12 from 1.19 on August 5. Meanwhile, healthcare utilization or yung use ng mga, mga hospital was at 37% while ICU occupancy for COVID was 32%, both as of August 14. Ito po ang sinabi ni, ni fellow David. Positivity rate refers to the percentage okay, of the tests that are coming out positive, while the term growth rate measures the speed of the increase in COVID-19 infections in given areas. The World Health Organization recommends the proportion of COVID-19 tests coming back positive should remain below 5% to ensure the spread of the virus is under control. Okay, The DOH says over 10,000 10, cases are still possible. Okay, At the same time, the Department of Health also said earlier this week that there was a possibility of over 10,600 daily COVID-19 cases in Metro Manila by October. Yan po. Inisip na na by October, dadagdag pa ng 10,000 infections. For the data po from the Department of Health, Quezon City logged the most coronavirus cases in Metro Manila with 241 new infections on Monday. Manila, Makati, and Paranaque came after with 148, 117, and 103 new cases in their localities. But di ba po, it's a far cry from mga libo-libo. Salamat. Thank you, Lord. Okay? No other city in Metro Manila eclipsed the 100 cases mark for that day. This once again gives us hope that the peak of the wave in the NCR okay, may occur by next week. No guarantees. The trends need to be consistent for about a week before we can confidently say there is a down downward trend. Okay? Ha! Huh. Mabuti naman, alright? Okay, so now we go back po to uh to the, the to our topics that we were we were uh, talking about with regards to cyber crimes. Pero uh, in connection pa rin pa po muna sa Philippines, no? Okay? Uh, I just want to talk about the uh, ayan po. Oh, the, the senior population on the, is on the rise sa Philippines po. Ito po yun, ano? Uh, the global phenomenon of an aging population is creeping to the Philippines. Diba po sa Japan po, aging society na talaga sila. Okay? Aging society na sila. Uh, ano ba itong mga to? Alright. Aging society na sila. Teka, nag-block ng view. Uh, hold on. Yes. The, uh, the global phenomenon of aging population is... It's not, it's, Creeping to the Philippines, okay? Uh, the Commission on Population and Development, yung PAPCOM po, citing recent data from the Philippine Statistics Authority, yung PSA, said that the percentage of Filipino elderly in the population has expanded in the last two decades, rising to 8.5% in 2020 from 5.9% in 2000, okay? It said the number of so-called ang ating mga senior citizens po or Filipinos aged 60 years and above Doubled to 9.2 million in 2020. That's a pandemic, to, from 4.5 million 20 years ago. The number of seniors is on the rise due to better health and socioeconomic conditions. But ganon na pero kasi parang feeling ko yung ano nga yung life expectancy bumaba parang mas maraming namatay na maaga pero mas maraming tumanda. <laughs> Uh, the number of seniors is on the rise due to better health and social economic conditions now. Seniors are better educated and have healthier lifestyles, really now. Okay? Ito pong sinabi ng popcom. Okay? On the other hand, the percentage of Filipino children in the population has declined significantly, according to the government body handling population-related programs. So-called young dependents or those under 15 years old was down to 30.70%. Meaning to say, ano po, naglo-low birth rate na ba rin tayo dito? I don't think so. Diba? Kasi sa Japan, anong, ano nila yan eh? Low birth rate. Yan po ang kanilang dilemma. They have a low birth rate. Okay? Uh, So-called dependents or un, uh, 
Uh, children under 5 years old make up 10.2% of the population in 2020, down from 12.6% in the year 2000. Okay, The number of young Filipinos appear to be trending significantly lower in recent years, po, while that of the elderly has been expanding. So, lumalaki po ang population ng senior, senior citizens dito sa Pilipinas. Executive Director Juan Antonio Perez III saw the trend in a positive light, saying that the country could benefit from the current relatively large numbers of children between 5 and 14 years old. Okay, The situation we are seeing now has evolved in other countries in Europe, the Americas, and lately in most of the West and Southeast Asian countries. A demographic transition which countries need to tackle with the correct population and development policies affecting the poor, young people, and women. Okay. The boon is possible in a relatively large number in the age group of 5 to 14 who will gradually join the workforce since 2035 po, ensuring a mas robust na potentially effective workforce, di ba? Policies which take advantage of this potential can reap a demographic dividend during this period. Yung mga policies to increase employability of the young and women, uh, greater entrepreneurship, incentives for local, micro, small, and medium enterprises, and increasing financial literacy. So, ang tinitignan po nila dito, positive yun, okay? However po, yung Popcom official warned that the next generation of the country's workforce could become a lost generation if they are not employed or are underemployed, which will create a socioeconomic burden for a smaller employed population, okay? Some countries like in Eastern Europe, kunyari, some Latin American countries po, have failed while ma ma many have benefited from a demographic demographic dividend like in Western Europe, North America, Russia, China, Japan, Korea, and Thailand, while many countries in Southeast Asia and Africa are somewhat behind. The Philippines is in the demographic window of opportunity, okay? Sinabi pa po ng Popcom na the latest PSA data showed a steady growth in the Philippines' working age population. Ang sa Japan po, ang problema nila, ano eh, yung kanilang workforce ay tumatanda na tumatanda. Not, no, a lot, not a lot of no babies are being born. At the same time po, they're an aging society. Mas, mas maraming pa na retireable citizen na, na tapos yung workforce na nga pa na matanda. No? So, um, Popcom said the latest PSA data showed a steady growth in the Philippines working age population as the 15 to 64 age group now makes up 63.9% of the population, okay? What are the challenges? While well, the increased longevity and improved health or older age is seen in many countries are some of the crowning achievements of the 20th century, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services noted that these trends also presented significant challenges. In fact, sa America po, nung araw po, 65 years old ang, senior, ang retirable age. Tinaas po nila yun ng 67. So Japan naman din, from 60, I think they're going to be 65. So dinataas nila yung ate kasi nga, mas healthy matatal na kapag work pa sila. Societal aging can affect economic growth, patterns of work, and retirement. The way that families function, di ba? So, ayun nga pong sinasabi na tinataas nila yung retirable age kasi nakakapagtrabaho pa. Hello there, Miss Angelica Paz. Good morning to you. Blessed Wednesday to you too, Ma'am Ma Angelica. <laughs> Thank you very much. At pakikita kita ulit dito ang iyong um, lovely presence. Thank you very much. Because I know you've been very busy and you're probably still always busy. Pero sana uh, in the coming weeks, mabigyan mo ng time ulit para samahan ako dito at kayo ni Sincha no? for, for one segment part sa ating mga employment opportunities and employment information po. Okay, thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Miss Angelica. What's happening? Hi. Bye. Thank you very much. Anyway, so yeah. So now we go back to uh, to our uh, issues for today. 
going back to picking up where we left off yesterday, yung winawarning na natin kung paano. Pero, oh, pero before that, okay, uh, the United States President Joe Biden on Tuesday, <laughs> signed into law a big climate change and health care spending bill giving Democrats another boost ahead of midterm elections in which Republicans are suddenly less certain of their predicted crushing victory. The law, dubbed as the Inflation Reduction Act, was touted by the White House as the biggest commitment to mitigating climate change in U.S. history, okay? As well as targeting long-sought changes in the way medicines are priced. Ayan, sa pagpresyo po ng gamot, while adding fairness to the tax system with a minimum 15% tax for corporations, okay? A nation can be transformed. That's what's happening now. Ito pong sinabi ni President Biden in a White House speech likely to form the basis of his campaign ahead of the November polls. Imagine, napakabilis ng panahon, kampanya na naman. Where Republicans have hoped to end democratic narrow control of Congress. It's about tomorrow, Biden said. It's about delivering progress and prosperity to American families. It's about showing America and the American people that democracy still works in America. Oh, ayan po yung aking kalahating ano yan, citizenship. Ay, dyan. While the sprawling bill is a fraction of the gargantuan package Biden originally tried and failed to get through Congress, the fact he was able to sign even a scaled-back version marked a political re re resurrection. Okay. A success Democrats now hope might fuel a comeback at the ballot box later this year. Under the plan, the government will spend about $370 billion on green energy initiatives while also allowing the state-run Medicare system to negotiate prices for prescription drugs, a popular measure designed to cut the often ruinous prices Americans are forced to pay. Sana all, di ba? Sana tayo din yung mga gamot bumaba ang presyo. Sana rin tayo, ganyan. Instead of Medicare, meron tayong SSS at PhilHealth. Diba? Although the Republican National Committee called the provision to subsidize electric vehicle purchases a scam, okay, the Sierra Club, an environmental lobbying group, praised what it called a bold step in the struggle against an overheating planet. Yun na nga eh, yung mga e-vehicles. E Kung pa tayo na, andito ano, sa Philippines, sa, sa Japan po, marami nang gumagamit ng e-cars. E Eh, hindi kasi pwede, pwede sa atin sa traffic dito. Mawawala na kagad ng battery. Naka, yung, yung dalawang oras na pwede mo i-travel sa kalye, naubos na sa traffic. So, mamawala lang ka na ng battery doon. Hindi talaga yata pwede, pwede dito yun. Walang, walang charging station. Tsaka yun na nga, yung lifespan ng e-cars mo, ang speed 45, tapos uh, 8 hours mo it's charge pwede ka lang magbiyahe ng ano, 40 kilometers, 50 kilometers, so like, sa ilang oras lang yun. Eh kung traffic, eh, wala na, di ba? This day will be remembered by future generations of the, as the turning of the tide against the fossil fuel industry. Okay? And toward a healthier, cleaner, and more just future for all people across the country. Wow! Itong sinabi ng Amerika. Okay? The law's massive cost will be covered with large part by closing numerous tax loopholes and enforcing a new 15% minimum tax on corporations. So, ayan po ang ginawa nila move para, para kasi gagawa sila ng mga programa towards climate change. Okay. Very good. Okay. So, now we go back, okay, to what we have been discussing regarding uh, online fraud. Okay. We already said, we already pinpointed, di ba, what online fraud is and what is happening, you know, how are we going to protect ourselves. So, well, we stopped at, um, okay, because uh, fraud is a fact of life for those doing business online. Yes, online fraud will always happen, okay. Every e-commerce e company encounters fraud at some point in their lives, okay. It's often when that first Merchants charge chargeback arrives, kunyari, no? that merchants become fully aware of the fraud risks that are specific to e-commerce, okay? A massive data breach becomes more common. The identities and credit accounts that fraudsters and fraud rings need to ply their trade become 
more readily accept, acceptable and accessible. It's happened to me. Uh, identity theft, you know, uh, account theft. So why is it so prevalent, right? The answer is how online fraud happens, diba? Yun na, sinabi na natin, bakit nangyayari ito? Stolen credit card information is easy to buy. Yun nga, sa dark web. Prosecution kasi is rare. Hindi, hindi lahat na napipenalize o nahuhuli. Okay? Or yung iba, wala na silang time pahuli pa o mag-pursue. Okay? Uh, so, kasi nga, ease of access to stolen credit cards eh. Diba? Yun yun eh. How does online credit card fraud take place? Okay? Credit card numbers are stolen or it's either by large criminal syndicates or yung mga solo na hackers. Diba? Yung sinabi natin. Prosecution is difficult and rare. Okay? Kaya sila sige-sige lang. Diba? Yun yun eh. Because nga it's rare in prosecution. Okay? Tapos, uh, So why is my business experiencing fraud? No, isipin nyo, diba? Okay? It's one of life's ironies. Sorry to say, okay? You work hard to make your online business more visible. And just when you're getting some traction, ito, yung mga fraudsters, yung mga cyber criminals, appear. Diba? Yan ang sad, ano diyan eh. The, the more that they're online, and of course, we have to establish local uh, online presence because nowadays, yan po talaga, being online is king. Wala tayong choice, okay? Uh, we have no choice but to, to be online because the business is there. Kaso, sa pag, paggawa natin yan, yan, nabasa naman din yung mga, mga cyber criminal na yan, mga fraudsters na tinatawag. The combination of advertising campaigns, a rising research engine ranking, and the use of a, of a store and perceived inexperience with detecting fraud make an online merchant an ideal target para sa mga fraudsters. Okay, let's explore why again. When an online merchant, okay, opens an e-commerce storefront, ito ang usapan natin na yung mga e-commerce, mga resellers, mga selling, sellers online, they're already entering a vast market. Malaking, malaking market po ang ating pinapasukan. The world is our oyster, di ba? One that is projected to have almost $5 trillion in the U.S. Sales by 20 24. It's a market dominated by large players like Amazon, and Walmart, ASOS, and others. Okay, in the Philippines or in China, it's uh, uh, Alibaba, uh, Lazada, Shopee, uh, Taobao, you know, marami. Shane. You know. In the beginning, an e-commerce business might generate sales primarily through friends and family. If they intend to grow beyond this small circle, they take steps to increase their visibility and boost traffic, diba? So they create sales and marketing strategies on variety of channels, okay? All designed to drive customers to their site and create sales. For example, okay, a common strategy po, ang ginagawa ng mga e-commerce uh, business, is using Facebook ads. Ayan po, Facebook ads to target a particular demographic or buying keywords from Google AdWords. Yan po, yan po ang mga online marketing. Ayan po, ito, ito yung mga bells and whistles na online marketing. Ito po yung mga buzzwords or important na, 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 na tinatandaan natin pag tayo yung nag, uh, online selling or e-commerce. Facebook ads, yan po. Kaya ang Facebook, di ba, under fire dahil yung nga sa whistleblower, patuloy ko sinasabi, yung whistleblower po, sinabi niya na pera-pera lang. Hindi, walang concern para doon sa subscribers mo matatawag yan or members ng Facebook or users of Facebook because hindi na si screen. Di ba? E ganun din naman kasi kahapon, di ba? Pinag-usapan ko yan. Na nangyayari na yan mga fake, yun, we were talking about fake news. Na fake news na ng araw even before walang online news. Yung, yung printed news, pwede rin i-fake news. Diba? So, yun ang pinag-usapan natin kahapon fake news but now we're na nag, nag diretso na tayo sa e-commerce. So, yun po ang mga ginagamit. Facebook ads to, to target a particular demographic or buying keywords from Google AdWords. If the strategies work, the business generates an increase in traffic by customers interested in purchasing the company's product. As a result of this, increase the traffic po 
sa company search engine ranking rises, di ba? Yung pa, yan po, dyan po mapasok din yung pag seo optimize ng inyong negosyo or ng website nyo. Alexa is a common tool that lists site rankings, okay? But with the increased visibility comes an unwanted new type of customer no business wants. Yan po. A fraudster or a cyber criminal, a hacker. Dahil po sa success na negosyo nyo at, at saka open kayo, yan po ay mga ina-attract nyo rin. Gan, sa ano po, sa ESL industry po, ganun din eh. Sa online English or, or online learning, marami rin pong fraudsters dyan. Especially po kung iba-iba yung offer ng mga ibang skwela, o karoon ka ng mga promo ng mga mga discount, you attract the wrong people too. You know, we have students who are not really students but are fraudsters. They're just there to steer, steer the pot up or harass the, the, the teachers, specifically po yung mga Filipina teachers natin na mga innocente. Ang dami po mga weirdos uh, even sa online learning, okay? Uh, when we, we were talking about, uh, diba, yung, um, we, we talked about cyber, or we call this fake news, okay? Uh, the fake news that we, we talked about. And we, when we also talked about what is fake news, how, how, how do they do that? How, how do they do it? How do they make it, okay? How to spot fake news, okay? We, we talked about that. Uh, and we finished off by saying, how can we avoid it, okay? Kasi para nyo, para nyo malaman, yun yung mga biased news, okay? Going back to that, okay, babalikan natin po yung, uh, yung e-commerce because uh, pinapaalala lang natin po kasi tayo nagtapos kahapon, nga, may nag-text sa akin dito, sabi niya, tapusin daw yung tungkol doon because yeah, I said already, I, I gave uh, examples and how to watch out for fake news. Kasi pag masyadong obvious, pag bias, masyado yung, yung news, tsaka pag propaganda siya about something, tsaka yung clickbait, di ba? Yung nasasatawag sa inyong i-click nyo, tsaka satire, di ba? Yun ang mga kinds of fake news. So, how to identify fake news? Sinabi ko, make sure that it's from a reliable source. You have to verify it. Tapos, yung sumunod doon po, okay? Doon tayo nagtapos, okay? So, yung pang unreliable source, yan po. How, ha, how do you identify fake news? Yes, okay, ito po. Tapos natin to, to pull doon. Una-una, once you know the prime source of fake news, knowing how to identify and avoid fake news gets a lot easier, okay? Kasi po, for every story, every graphic, or other form of news media, always verify who the original publisher is. Yan, dyan po tayo nag, nagtapos kahapon. Tama. So, identify nyo kung saan galing. Di ba? Check nyo yung source. Yun ang importante dun eh. Na i-check nyo yung source. Okay? Uh, ito tayo. Oh, how, to ident how to spot fake news. Yeah. You know? Ang dapat nyo gawin is identify the source. Right? Uh, Keep an eye out for notoriously unreliable websites, unknown blogs, or organizations, or posts on social media that do not that do not name the source. Okay? Pag hindi po nila sinasabi kung saan galing yung balita, for you to verify, di ba? Most likely po, fake. Right? Most likely fake. Okay? The deluge of unreliable news sources on social media raises questions about how safe Twitter is for children, okay? And may even tempt you to delete your own Facebook account, di ba? For fear na baka kung ano-anong nakababasa ng mga anak nyo. But getting in the habit of checking the reliability of sources won't just make you a more adept, more uh, secure, okay? In spotting fake news. It will also help you identify the mga clickjacking and avoid Facebook phishing and other scams before they affect you, okay? All right? Tapos ito pa, next nyo i-check, contradicting coverage. Ano yung sabihin? Contradicting. Pinakontra niya yung sarili niya. If the reporting of a story is out of step with the majority of other publications, ayun na nga. Kasi normally po, ano yan eh, pagka, di ba, online newspapers na tayo mostly, makikita niyo mostly yung mga headlines or yung mga trending things, medyo pareho. Na, na, nagsaswak sila because yun ang news eh. Yun ang what's really happening, okay? 
Pero pag medyo it's, itong news na to, nagda-divert doon sa, sa common contention, medyo magtaka na kayo, right? Okay? If the reporting of a story is out of step with the majority of other publications, this may be a sign that it's fake news, okay? Before jumping to conclusions, seek out more coverage of the event or topic to see if other reputable sources can confirm the story, all right? Knowing how to distinguish fake news from contradicting news is often a matter of confirming the trustworthiness of the journalist or the news outlet, okay? All right? To explore contradictory coverage, you might need a VPN in order to access geo-restricted content or evade state censorship with the help of the best browsers for privacy. All right. So, ayun na. Sinabi natin, paano to watch out for fake news? Unreliable sources, contradicting coverage. Pangatlo po, sensational headlines. Okay? Pag masyadong fantastic naman o masyadong bogus, uh, isipin na lang, bogus news or fake news can sometimes be identified simply from a sensational headline. Hindi na po, ha? Thank you. Even stories po, rooted in fact, are often manipulated to draw readers in uh, or spin a particular narrative. Yun pa, di ba? Sinesensationalize ang ginagrandstand para ma-attract yung attention niya ng, ng pagbabasa, right? The more, the more sensationalized the headline is, the more likely the article is likely to be clickbait. Oh, sinabi, alam niyo na yung clickbait, sinabi ko yan kahapon, no? Click. Kaya nga, clickbait. Binibait kayo para i-click nyo. Binibait nyo para i-click nyo itong video. Kaya na nga, kasi yung headline, ang daming makagagapit. Ang daming ganyan eh. Let me just show you. Nakiklik mo talaga kasi parang kin kinatawag ka ng balita. Lalo na yung mga chismis, right? Kinatawag ka ng chismis. Ano naman sa ito? Saan ba yun? Um, Uh, not that. It's in the news. Let me see a sample of it. Hold on. I'm going to have to phone to me. I'm going to have to call it. Where is it? Let me show you. But anyway, so, yun na nga. Ito, most likely hindi to fake news. Kagaya ng J&J and Global Sales of Talc Baby Powder. Siyempre, interesado ka, oh, lumaki ka naman na, di ba, sa Johnson's Baby Powder. They're gonna stop the sale of talc and powder. Yan. Pag yung headline mo, di ba, maganda, i-click mo talaga para baksan. Pero, ito kasi, ito ba ito? So, paano mo ma-verify yan? Well, it's from Enquirer. See? It's from Enquirer.net. J&J to end global sales of talc-based baby powder. Oh my God. No? Hihinto na yung pagbenta ng baby powder. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh. Siyempre, gusto mo malaman yung click akaga. Yan ang mag-clickbait. Pag yung headline, fantastic or, or very interesting to you, kaagad ka namang bubuksan ng continue reading, right? Pero ito, Johnson & Johnson will stop selling talcum-based baby powder globally in 2023. Imagine, baby, oh, wala nang Johnson's baby powder to stop na nilang paggawa ng Johnson's baby powder and lahat ng tao lumaki dyan. They will stop it by 2023. Oh my gosh. The drug maker said on Thursday, more than two years after it ended U.S. sales of the product, hala, two years na palang pinigil to. Oh my gosh. Ah, it drew thousands of consumer safety lawsuits talaga as part of a worldwide portfolio. Ah, anyway, so that's another thing. So, pero yun po, pagka yung headline po ay interesting, di ba? Kagad ka nagkiklik. So, isipin mo na lang, yung baka yung sen super sensationalized. Treat any, okay, the more sensationalized the headline, the more likely that the article is likely to be clickbait, propaganda, or even a source of malvertising. Kaya yan, malvertising is malverse. Ma, di ba? Yung malware. Malware advertising. Kaya malvertising. Okay? Wow. Treat any content introduced by a sensational headline with skepticism. Well, take that with a grain of salt or 
medyo magduda kayo pag masyadong sensational yung headline. And caution, check to see what other news outlets or trans, uh, trusted sources are covering the same story. Tama, i-compare nyo, di ba? Tignan nyo kung talagang pinag-uusapan nyo para malaman nyo kung totoo yun, okay? Uh, if an article is outdated, okay, pag pasay na po yung news, it may no longer be relevant, okay? Most reputable news outlets update or remove outdated uh, coverage but information shared in good faith can become fake news, okay? As content evolves and the understanding of events and subjects develops, okay? Check for fake news by ensuring you're reading the most up-to-date information on the topic. Okay? And na naman itong satire. Yung satire kasi yung parang kalokohan eh, di ba? Yun yan, yung mga satirical coverage. Kunyari po, a piece of news seems particularly outrageous or bizarre, parang weird na, or talagang ridiculous, uh, question if it's meant to be taken seriously. Okay? Sipin nyo, kung totoo ba to, joke ba to, joke ba to, or seryoso ba to? Often, sat satirical pieces about current affairs are posted alongside real news. Ayan nga yung mga ginagawang memes. Sinasadya nila yun to be funny. Okay? Hindi siya totoong news. Kagaya na sinabi ko kahapon, yung mga yun, halatang patawa, di ba? Mga obvious na hindi yun totoo. Kasi, minsan, nilalagay nila yun almost katabi ng totoong news, okay? So, uh, satires are easy to spot, okay? Uh, because current affairs are posted alongside real news, particularly on social media, which can lead to confusion, but can also in induce humor, di ba? Satires is easy to spot when it comes from a popular fake news website, but it's harder to tell if something is fake or a joke when it's seen out of content. Okay, all right. Oh my God. Okay. Teka, meron lang ako nakitang shocking news. Oh my goodness. Did you see that a knife-wielding Tesla kills pedestrian in an incident that sent shockwaves across the automotive industry? Yung, yung kotse. Oh my God. Ayoko talaga yung ano yan, driverless cars. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about those things in another time, okay? Na, na sidetrack na ako. Anyway, so going back to <coughs> fake news and how to, 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 to find it. Ang uh, sunod dyan po after yung satirical coverage is yung instinct nyo. Okay, follow your instinct. Okay, follow your instinct. Knowing how to tell fake news from real news isn't always easy. Talaga naman po, hindi madaling malaman po anong fake news at hindi. And sometimes... You have to rely on common sense, di ba po? Dapat yung common sense lang. Because fake news is convincing precisely because it's designed to play to the reader's biases, okay? Yung mga kanila ng preconceived notions. It plays on people's hopes. And it plays on people's fears, okay? But just like with phishing schemes, yung mga phishing na sinasabi ko, yung mga nag, uh, pupunta sa email nyo or nag-detect sa inyo na nanalo kayo or may trabaho pa sa inyo or may regalo kami sa inyo kasi it, it, it price on people's sentiment eh, di ba? Kagaya ng mga phishing schemes tsaka other scams things usually seem a bit off with fake news articles and other media so trust your instincts okay? trust your gut okay? protect your device from fake sites okay? okay? yung laptop nyo yung phone nyo desktop nyo, from fake news stories, websites to malicious downloads and phishing links, the web is awash. Marami pong mga bogus sites designed to trick you. Okay? And it doesn't hurt to be vigilant po. Okay? It's, uh, it's really hard to avoid these things lalo na kung kayo ay online 24 hours a day like me po. Because of my work, ako po ay Ong araw na naka-online, dahil sa trabaho kong ginagawa. And hindi ko talaga maiwasan yan. And, and I know, naagi po ako nababirusan sa laptop ko, sa cellphone ko, because I'm online all the time. I'm not online all day doing Facebook ko. Para yung trabaho. Pero kailangan po po kasi maging online because part of my work is being online. I mean, a lot of my work is online. So, protect your device from fake sites, okay? Uh, because... These sites are, you know, because these, these things are designed to trick you, the mga fake news, okay? So, and be vigilant. Being vigilant isn't always enough. That's why kailangan po ng tulong ng mga, ng mga 
a vast secure browsers. Kasi yan po meron mga security tools. Safer browsing is just a click away. So, specific, ito pong a vast secure browser, itong recommended kong makakatulong nyo. Specifically engineered by security experts for maximum protection. A vast secure browser prevents web tracking, it masks your identity, and automatically blocks fake sites, pop-ups, and then dangerous links to shut down clickbait and other scams at their source. Plus, with the new companion feature, a vast secure browser makes it easy to verify the, authentic the authenticity of any new story you come across online. So, meron po dyan, tingnan niyo po sa online, mag-download po kayo ng free a vast secure browser. Meron po silang trial period, no? Pwede niyong magamit. It's a free download, okay? Uh, verify your new sources automatically. Download free anti uh, vast secure browser to get a vast news companion and check the trustworthiness of the website you visit, okay? So, ito po yung, yung ano, uh, vast secure browser is available both in Android, tsaka iOS, tsaka ng Mac, okay? Yan po makakatulong mag-protect sa inyo against fake news is also going to check the trustworthiness sa mga websites na inyong bibisitahin. Okay? Uh, so, with that uh, said po, yan po ang ating ending tungkol sa fake news naman. Tomorrow, we will continue about e-commerce and the things that kinakaharap ng mga problema online regarding fraudsters and hackers sa e-commerce industry. We're also going to be talking about cryptocurrency. Tagal na pong tinapag-usapan kasi, kasi it's something that I don't dabble in and I don't quite understand. But people are asking about it, okay? Tapos yung QR codes. How do you, how do you, uh, yung mga nowadays po, yung paggamit ng QR codes, papag-usapan din natin. Tsaka yung mga ATM skimming, paano how to spot yung mga nagnanakaw, pati pati ATM, nagnanakaw yung code, okay? Nahahack din yan. So, thank you so much for joining me today, alright? This is BNJ Bautista for Buhay Online po. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong patuloy na pag-support. Thank you very much, Ms. Angelica Paz, uh, si Jake Lazar, na mimiss ko, and si Ms. Tencha Buste, related happy birthday to you. So, thank you very much for joining, at bukas po magbabalik tayo on a Thursday. Maraming maraming salamat po and uh, God bless everyone. At the end of the day, three things should remain. Faith, hope, and love. Maraming salamat! Inyong natuhayan at napakinggan ang mga makabagong pamamaraan sa mundo ng online. Sa pamamagitan pa rin ng Broad Streamcast Communicators. Hanggang sa muli, maraming salamat po.